On this, the November 19th, 2023 edition of What's Going On With Shipping, has an Israeli ship been hijacked? I am your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to today's episode. So there is no question that Houthi rebels based out of Yemen have hijacked a car carrier by the name of Galaxy Leader heading southbound in the Red Sea. The question is, is the vessel an Israeli ship? Because both the Israeli Defense Force and the Israeli Prime Minister have said no. Yet when you look at the records, it's not exactly that clear. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. So here is the information put out earlier this week, November 16th, by the International Maritime Security Construct warning about threat levels heightened in the Red Sea. And in particular, they're talking about the approaches to the Bab el Mandab. This is the narrow strait between Yemen and Djibouti at the very southern end of the Red Sea, where they says this is, continues to be an area of concern. And when choosing routes, orient towards creating maximum feasible distance from Yemeni waters. Well, as you'll see, that is impossible to do because of the constraints of the waters in that area. Now, the world has jammed about every naval craft you can imagine in and around this region for good reasons. The United States, along with its allies of NATO, have a massive presence right now up here in the eastern Mediterranean, centered around the U.S. aircraft carrier Gerald R. Ford. They have recently deployed the carrier USS Dwight D. Eisenhower through the Suez Canal through the Red Sea and now in a position off the Gulf of Oman and the U.S. Navy has basically set up a position in the northern Red Sea to catch missiles flying out of Yemen toward Israel. We saw shoot downs by the USS Kearney and also by the Thomas Hudner. However, what you don't see in this graphic, which is great, is any vessels kind of stationed down here at the Bab el Mandab region where we just experienced the hijacking of the Galaxy Leader. This is Galaxy Leader on Marine Traffic, 2002 built ship, uh, built at the Gdansk shipyard in Poland. Uh, the ship, 189.2 meters long, 32.29 meters wide, was heading southbound in the Red Sea, was sailing from Turkey to India with a load of cars on board when it was seized. So this was the last AIS automated information system report on galaxy leader as she was heading southbound in the red sea you'll notice the ship is close to Jeddah and mecca here off the coast of saudi arabia across from sudan heading southbound however one of the things that you'll note here is the ship turned off its ais early we see this a lot with israeli owned tankers that are sailing this region and heading to saudi arabia in the persian gulf region They'll turn them off so they can't be tracked as they come down here through the Red Sea. We believe now the ship was actually seized in this area down here, much closer to the Yemen coast. Now, this is a heavily trafficked area. And when you look at the amount of ships that come through, you begin to understand why it's very difficult to police this area because of the number of ships that come in and the tight constraint you get down here at the Bab el Mandab, not a lot of room in there and very easy for people to board ships and, and get on board them in that area. Although I will mention that a car carrier is a difficult ship to get on. And I have some questions about how the Houthi were able to get on board the ship. So this was posted on Tanker Trackers on their Twitter page, but also posted to their uh, users. If you don't follow Tanker Trackers, you should. A great service. What they posted was this. A tweet posted by the Israeli Defense Force made headlines just now saying that Houthi rebels in Yemen have hijacked a vessel in the southern Red Sea. The vessel was underway to India from Turkey. They're saying that this is not an Israeli ship. And that is true. Both the Israeli Prime Minister and the Israeli Defense Force have denied any connection to Israel with the ship. And we're going to come back to that. Quick search on marine traffic shows that the UK insured, Isle of Man owned, Greek managed, and Bahamian flagged, yes, welcome to the international world of global shipping people, vehicle carrier Golden Leader went offline yesterday, November 18th at 11.37 UTC at 19.88 degrees north, 38.83 degrees east. Uh, according to the AIS, the ship departed Kurfuz, Turkey on November 12th for Pipivev, India, ETA of November 23rd. What's interesting, however, is that her speed and course were fairly unchanged up until her disappearance from AIS at 17.5 knots at 148 degrees. Normally, we see a hijacking. We would see hints of that in the data points. In this case, however, she just vanished off the AIS. And again, when ships are trying to evade, they'll be maneuvering, they'll be slowing down, they'll be boarded. 
you don't see that in this case. It, it's pretty clear the ship turned off its AIS well in advance before the situation developed. So looking at further reports here, this is the story that was in Trade Winds that's referenced in the Marine, uh, excuse me, in the tanker traffic report. Red, uh, Ray car carrier PTC reported hijacked in the Red Sea. It goes on here, Yemeni army spokesman said in a televised statement that the Houthi naval forces carried out a military operation in the Red Sea, which resulted in the seizure of a quote unquote Israeli ship. The Israeli defense forces confirmed the attack, but says, quote, this is not Israeli. Uh, go on down here. Bay, uh, excuse me, Ray Car Carriers is registered in the Isle of Man, a subsidiary of London-based Unity Maritime owned by Danny Unger. The Unger family are going to play a huge role here, and we're going to come back to them. Ray Car Carriers is a fleet of 65 car carriers and two 2020-built VLCCs. Uh, the Israeli Prime Minister's Office said, quote, strongly condemned the Iranian attack against an international ship. So they are blaming not the Houthis, but the, who backed the Houthis, the Iranians. Quote, the ship owned by a British company and operated by a Japanese company was hijacked on Iranian whim by Houthi militia in Yemen. On board the ship are 25 crew members of different nationalities, including Ukrainians, Bulgarians, Filipinos, and Mexicans. No Israelis are present on the ship. Okay, first off, a couple of things. Differing numbers on crews on the ship, anywhere from 22 to 25. Not surprising when you look at the operating company for this vessel, where this crew is from. Eastern Europeans usually make up the officers, Ukrainian, Bulgarians, and then Filipinos make up the unlicensed. Mexican is new. I have not seen many Mexicans as unlicensed crew members. But then there's this story over at Lloyd's List. A great story by Michelle Wiesbachman, excellent reporter. Houthi hijacked Israeli-owned car carrier Galaxy Leader. So, very clear as he's sitting here going that this is Israeli-owned. Galaxy Leader is owned by Tel Aviv-based Ray Shipping, one of the largest providers of car carriers and truck carriers. Goes on here, Houthi rebels have reportedly hijacked the Galaxy Leader. I'm going to jump down here to what we need. Galaxy Leader is owned by Tel Aviv-based Ray Shipping, operates 65 pure car and truck carriers. The beneficial owners are Rami Unger and Yal Unger. According to Lloyd's List Intelligence, the company is one of the largest providers of car carrier tonnage. The ISM and technical manager was listed as Stanco Ship Management Company Limited in Greece, with the registered owner Galaxy Maritime Incorporated in, Corp in the Isle of Man. It goes on here to a further part that I think is getting missed by a lot. This is not the first time that vessels owned by Ray Shipping have been targeted while transiting the Middle East, Gulf, and Red Sea region. Iran has attacked two Ray Shipping owned vessels, firing a missile at the Hyperion Ray on April 13th, 2021. We covered that story and was said to be responsible for an explosion on the Helios Ray on February 25th earlier that year. The Houthi spokesman said all ships connected to Israel will be attacked as a result of Israeli actions in Gaza and asked countries to withdraw nationals working on these vessels. So, Michelle Weiss-Bachman does a great job in making that connection to how this ship is connected to Israel. This is Ray Car Carriers Limited, their website. Again, operate these kind of pure car and truck carriers, a good medium-sized fleet of vessels, nothing new, largely. They buy their vessels. In the case of Galaxy Leader, uh, looks like she was once owned by NYK Line. She's uh, decked out in that NYK livery, but we know that Ray Carriers is the, sh is, is the company that's basically booking the cargo for the vessel. And then Stamco Company, the ship management company, is the one that deals with the day-to-day -day leading of the vessel, and Galaxy Leader is listed right here. They operate and manage. They do the hiring of the crew, the refueling of the vessel, uh, basically getting it from point A to point B throughout the world. So this is Equus, and I want to break this down for you because I think this is really important to identify what we're talking about here. So again, the ISM manager, and this is the ship manager, is Stamco Ship Management out of Piraeus. We know that. Then it says here, the ship manager, commercial manager, is Ray Car Carriers, 33-37 Athol Street, Douglas, Isle of Man. So when they say British, they're not meaning UK. They're meaning Isle of Man. And I know Isle of Man is part of the United Kingdom, but Isle of Man is kind of like the Cayman Islands in shipping. It is an offshore. It is an open registry. It allows you to incorporate without a lot of tax and, and oversight that you have. So a lot of companies go through the Isle of Man. Uh, it then goes on, the registered owner is Galaxy Maritime Limited, which was mentioned. Understand how global shipping works. 
Most ships are owned by a company, but that company has no assets but that ship. Maybe a company will have two, three ships, one or two, three ships, but that's it. That's because if you are owner of a ship, you do not want that ship coming back to you. You want barriers between you and the ship. So you create up these shell companies on Isle of Man, for example, so that if the ship is involved in an accident and sued, that the only place that can go to is the ship and then that immediate ownership company. It doesn't come to you. This is lessons learned from Amico Cadiz and Exxon Valdez when Amico and Exxon had to pay out huge amounts of money for disasters with ships with their names on them because they directly own them. Also note where Galaxy Maritime Limited is. Care of, not even saying not even hiding this care of Ray car carriers, 3337 Ethel street, Douglas Isle of man. So they're the same thing. They're the same exact thing. And they're all owned by the same person or the same family. Let's boil down this international slugfest of shipping right here. So the ship was attacked by Houthi rebels out of Yemen who are backed by Iran. Okay. It's carrying cargo that was loaded in Turkey and bound for India. The crew on board the ship is Ukrainian, Bulgarian, Filipino, and Mexican. The classification society is DNV out of Norway. Uh, the ship is flagged in Bahamas, so expect the Bahamian Navy to come any day now to save the vessel. <laughs> that, that's not happening. Uh, the ship manager is in Greece. The commercial manager is on the Isle of Man. The registered owner is on the Isle of Man. And the true beneficial owner of all this is Abraham or Rami Unger. He owns Ray car carriers. He's an Israeli citizen. His company is based in Tel Aviv. And while the Israeli Defense Force and Benjamin Netanyahu can say everything they want, that this is not an Israeli ship, it's not flying an Israeli flag, it doesn't have Israelis on board, it's owned by an Israeli. And the reason for the attacks in the past has been that Israeli connection. Because Israel is not crazy to fly ships with Israeli flags. Zim doesn't do that. You almost see no ships with Zim flying Israeli flags. Uh, this is the problem with global shipping in that it involves so many folds and twists. The problem I have right now is that a crew of 22 to 25 are going to be held hostage by the Houthi rebels in Yemen. Who is going to come to their assistance? Is it the Bahamian Navy? Freaking no. Bahamian Navy is not coming. Is it going to be the, those massive Navy vessels that are in and around the area? I don't know because none of those have an interest in this at all. Uh, when we go back to the age of piracy, back to the 2010s and when Somalia was grabbing pirates, the only ships that were grabbed and taken back were those of nations that had navies, the US. The US didn't go save every ship grabbed by the Somalis. We only saved the ones with Tom Hanks on board. Uh, those are the only ones we go save. And so what happens to this crew right now? I don't know. But the big concern that you should all be having is what does this do to global shipping? Is this going to cause insurance rates to go up? Is it going to cause delays transiting through the area? Uh, is it going to cause backlogs of vessels waiting to go through these narrow straits for daylight hours or for convoys? I don't know. But it has a big global implication because we're already seeing delays coming out of the Panama Canal because of water restrictions. If we start seeing delays out of the Suez Canal and increased costs, that's going to have major problems. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hey, take a moment and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You hit the super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly or yearly subscriber. Until the next video, Sal, signing off.